All right, Jesse on Fire, welcome back to the second channel, Jesse on Fire After Hours. So we're going to talk about a an article uh, right here, uh, which is about Dana White talking about Tito Ortiz and Randy Couture's past UFC dealings. These guys tried to destroy the company. All right, so it is a very interesting uh, article because it talks about some of the earlier day stuff, Tito Ortiz holding the UFC hostage. UFC, uh, I'm sorry, Tito Ortiz has denied a bunch of this stuff, right? Like Dana's made a bunch of accusations at Tito about how he dealt with the company when he was in his heyday. And Tito's like, that's a total lie. I com- I'm just going to say this outright. I'm not saying that Dana's always telling the truth, but I 100% believe Dana about this. This, I completely believe Dana. And with Randy Couture, it was a very different situation. So this is one of those, I- I'm excited to do this video because now we get to talk about business. And as, uh, you know, what you know it's always like like what do you bring to the table that other people don't to whatever you're doing so like with with mma youtube you know hey jesse what do you bring to the table that other people don't that you know do mma youtube it's like i have been on the other side of the table where i have been a company owner and i've been an employee and so when you're looking at the structure of this business very few people have had to had to actually be the person responsible for running payroll and looking at the books and then trying to figure out how the company is going to succeed when you're losing money losing money like i know what this is like and i know what it's like to deal with employees who don't understand that side of the business right and i also know how to sniff out people who are being greedy and unreasonable and i'm not saying that dana is not that you know i'm just saying bottom line is I can I could bring some color to this story that's what we're going to do now if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet go ahead and do that that is all I ask is that you subscribe to the channels and you can uh enjoy all of my content I I am going to have a members only video today about the uh Scientologist the Danny Masterson case the guy who just got convicted of uh uh, assaulting two two women and got sentenced to 30 years in jail because I hadn't really looked at that case and now I have I know exactly what happened there and it is not what people think it is not what people think, and it'll blow your mind. But that's going to be in members only, so it is what it is. Anyway, all right, so we're going to be reading this together, all right? So Dana White uh, Dana White had had his fair share of public feuds, Tito Ortiz, no secret, blah, 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 you know, preamble, blah, 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 blah. UFC standouts during a rocky early 2000s while Randy Couture actually walked away from the promotion and vacated the heavyweight title in 2007 over contract dispute. Randy Couture wanted to fight against uh, Fedor. That's what that was about. He wanted Fedor. Okay. And, uh, you know, I mean, listen, dude, it's <laughs> the whole entire thing about free agency with the UFC is a very tough one to navigate because the reason these guys are stars is because of the marketing dollars that UFC put into them. And ultimately you can understand why the UFC would not feel like they should have to let them go and then go do things that they have no part of since they essentially are an asset that the UFC has invested a ton of money into creating. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense and it might sound ridiculous to, to a lot of people, but I, I understand the UFC's perspective on it, which is these guys are like a, a person is a brand, right? In, in this business, a person is a brand and a person's brand if it becomes huge as a direct result of money that you spent on them, promoting them, and a show that you put on with them in it, you know, and at the same time, I mean, the other side's true too. You're like, are you serious, dude? I trained martial arts my entire life. You think you made me? You think you won those fights for me? What are you talking about? You know? So there's always going to be that like dynamic between fighters and the promotions. Anyway, all right. So Tito Ortiz, when him and Chuck Liddell fought, as a promoter, you're not supposed to be rooting. You're not supposed to have a rooting interest. I couldn't wait to see Chuck whoop his ass. 100%, especially at such a critical time in the sports development and the development of the UFC. There are probably two guys that absolutely tried to destroy the company at that time. And it was Tito Ortiz and Randy Couture, two of the worst guys to ever deal with. Um, Now, if what Dana says here about... uh, about Tito is true. This is super garbage behavior. I mean, like trash bag behavior, absolutely garbage. Here's the thing about, you know what? Let me just, sorry. I already know what he's going to say. So I'm just like, I'm commenting on it before you guys even know. All right. Um, Here's the problem with Tito. Tito is just, wait, here's the problem with Tito. Tito's just a really dumb human being. He's not intelligent at all. He's very, very stupid. Let's start there. Look at him speak publicly anytime. Google Tito Ortiz talking, and I don't have to, and I don't have any beef with Tito anymore. Tito, you know you're stupid. 
Tito, you know you are. And you know who else is stupid? Whoever wrote this article, because look at this, okay? We're talking about stupid people and you're a journalist and you wrote this article and you put your stupid Y-O-U-R. That's indefensible. You're a journalist. It's Y-O-U apostrophe R-E because he's saying you are, right? That's an abbreviation for you are. It's indefensible when someone is calling someone stupid for you to make that mistake. You're an idiot. You, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, an idiot. Anyway, uh, Tito, we'd be coming up to a fight uh, that was big, wait, coming up to a big fight that was on Saturday. Deals have been done for months. Tito would say, I'm not going to show up unless you pay me another 150000 or whatever the number was. He would do this on a regular, on the regular, and I would go crazy. Tito was always the type of guy that would step over dollars to pick up dimes because he thought he was smart, but he was uh, the complete opposite of smart. He's not a smart guy. He destroyed what could have been an incredible relationship because we loved Tito at the time. Tito was our guy. Tito was my guy. Frank and Lorenzo loved Tito. He absolutely destroyed a relationship that he could have had for the rest of his life over Nichols, Nichols in the big picture. So I'm going to stop here and comment on this. So I believe Dana about that, 100%. I absolutely believe Dana about that. And I do believe that Tito probably did that more than once. He probably did it twice. You know, if I was going to guess, actually, I don't know. There's no reason for me to guess because I believe him. I, I 100% believe him that he did that. And to comment on the quality of that behavior as a 1099 independent contractor or as an employee or any other person who is involved with any organization ever on a scale of one to 10, 10 being utter, complete and total. Tra- Actually, let's do it like this. One being that uh, you saw a pack of gum sitting on the table that was full. You don't know whose it is and you took a piece from your for yourself and ate it and then put it back. That's one. 10 being Gavin Newsom having an affair with his chief of staff's wife, right? 10 being that, the worst thing that you could possibly do, you're the worst human on earth, he's gonna run for president. Just for the record, that guy is gonna run for president. That's 10, okay? Holding the organization hostage when you're the main event and demanding more money a week out is an eight. Seriously, it's an eight. It's, an, it's indefensible. Dude. It's an eight. If 10 is sleeping with your best friend's wife, doing what Tito did is an eight. And only a person who is a moron would not realize how stupid that actually, or how wrong that is. Okay? And just to put this in perspective, you sign a contract, okay? I realize people just kind of willy-nilly, you know, agree to terms, sign contracts, whatever. Okay? But those things matter. And it's not, it's not anyone else's responsibility to teach you that when you sign a piece of paper, that what is on that paper is what you are agreeing to legally, okay? It's not anyone else's responsibility to teach you that, okay? You're a grown-up. At the time, Tito's what, 28, 29, 30 years old? Dude, it's not like you're, you have been paid to fight. You have made agreements. People have paid you the money that you were owed. I guarantee you 100% of the time that Tito fought, that the UFC paid what he was owed. So they have 100% of the time lived up to what they agreed to, right? So when you are the main event of a show, okay, that starts a chain reaction, all right? That starts a chain reaction where the UFC starts spending enormous amounts of money, starts spending enormous amounts of money. All of the people that work for UFC start just throwing themselves into work to promote this event. The UFC is not like other organizations. They live and die on events, okay? Now, the UFC has evolved immensely since then, but at the time, the UFC is going to live and die on the success of the single event that everyone is 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 working towards. They put on like one every two months or something like that, okay? They build the event around the top billing, which is Tito Ortiz versus whoever he's fighting. Okay, so all of the work and all of the money that is getting thrown into this this event centers on or hinges on you showing up and fighting. You know that, right? You know that. You've already agreed to the terms that you're going to fight under. So you waiting until the last minute, waiting until it's the bottom of the ninth, 
everything's been done. Everybody's done all the work. Everybody spent all the money and then going, well, they can't put it on without me. Hey, bitch, I'm not going to show unless you pay me another 150 K. So it, 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 I mean, like I said, it's an eight. If, if 10 is sleeping, it's, it's wrong. It's just, it's so wrong. And to the point that Dana made, I don't think that Tito is even malicious. I think he's a moron. Like, I think that was just him being stupid and not like, it's like, dude, how do you not, you can't do that. He just thinks to himself, he's all, pfft. everyone always wants more money. Everyone always wants more money. And also if you're on the outside, this is the thing I was talking about. If you're the employee, you're working for someone else. Everyone is always counting other people's dollars and they never have the full picture. Well, not never, but most of the time don't have the full picture, right? Like even now when John Jones is negotiating with Dana and or negotiating with the UFC and Dana's like, dude, you can come and sit down with Hunter. He will open the books for you and show you every bit of our costs. He's like, We're, we will open the books for you. What you're asking for is not possible. We can't pay you $25 million to fight, dude. It's not possible. We're going to show you. Like, we'll show you what our profit is in each event, in your event. Come look. Now, I'm not saying that you that you shouldn't drive a hard bargain with the UFC because if you don't drive a hard bargain, they will not pay you, okay? This is a business that runs on, this is the most, <laughs> this is the most, like, you take what you are owed business but there are rules for that. Once you've signed a contract and then they have spent the money. Now, listen, I'm not saying you can't renegotiate a contract. That I'm not saying. I'm not saying that at all. You sign a contract, you sign a seven fight deal, you become the biggest star ever, right? Or some other thing changes, you know, then you can renegotiate, right? But you cannot renegotiate by having that, by agreeing to a fight, signing a bout agreement, you cannot renegotiate once you've signed a bout agreement. That is the rule. That's a hard and fast rule. You sign a bout agreement, you can't renegotiate on that fight. You cannot do it. You can't do it. It's a scumbag move. It's like banging the guy's wife. You can't do it, dude. And what here? And here's the other thing. When Dana says he would step over dollars for nickels, what he's saying is, he that, that yeah, they probably ended up having to pay him that sometimes, right? Like he's like, yeah, so we just paid him sometimes. Or we'd be like, okay, fine. We'll give you an extra $60,000. And what he's saying is they, he, what, what Tito actually did is he broke a relationship with, with Tito, with, I'm sorry, with Dana and the Fertitas. Do you understand the value of a friendship, a genuine friendship with people like the Fertitas and Dana, if they are grateful to you for helping them build the wealth that they have now? Like, I just think that people don't understand this. Like, this is a world that is ran on relationships. Okay, this whole world, it runs on relationships. Okay, what, we're 13 minutes into a video that's on my second channel. Okay, sometimes I'll just peel, I'll peel the, you know, the, the curtain back a little bit more than normal. If you notice a consistency on, the, on certain people that I don't, like basically if you, if you kind of watch my channel and you're like, seems like, uh, seems like he's pretty nice about this guy a lot. You know, like seems like he doesn't ever really slam this, you know, this person. It's because I've deemed that that is a valuable relationship. Whoever that is, what, what anybody that you see me do that with, <clears throat> it's like, okay, so he's, I've deemed that to be a valuable relationship that I do not want to poison by just talking shit on a, on a, on a video. You know, I'll never be dishonest. I won't ever defend people that I think are wrong, but I do things with tact, where if you see things where it's like, man, he really went pretty hard on that guy, it's because I've deemed there's no value in that relationship. Like, there's no, that's not a person I'm gonna be friends with most likely. It's not a person who could provide any value to me ever at any point. Relationships are the key to every single thing that you wanna do in your life. Let's say that I wanted to take this to the next level, which I do, right? Like, I'm going, to, whatever I do next is going to be certainly bigger than me just doing my own shit on YouTube some kind of studio show, some kind of, you know, attached to some, you know, bar stool, whatever, shit like that, right? How do you think that that happens? Like, how do you think a thing like that happens? Is it because I just like, I'm all, oh, I, you know, I want to be on blah, blah, blah. And then I just have, no, I have an idea. I call someone who has juice in the industry that I'm friends with. I say, dude, this is my idea. What do you think about that? They call the person who actually can make that decision. That person makes it, you know what I mean? And so Tito poison, 
What is a better, more valuable relationship than the Fertitas and Dana? And, D and Tito poisoned that over probably a total of like three or one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So dumb, 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 to dumb, dumb, dumb. Anyway, um, so continuing on. Uh, wait, so they don't even talk about uh, they don't even talk about Randy in this. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so apparently that's the whole video. I thought they were going to talk about Randy Couture. But uh, they just talked about Tito. So that's what it is. Subscribe to the channel. Gave you more than you bargained for on that one. Love you guys. Peace.